Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 19 of 2024, appointing heads of Bahrain's diplomatic missions abroad based on the nomination of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the Cabinet's approval. The Royal Decree stipulates the appointment of the following Ambassadors. Isam Abdul Aziz Al Jassim shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to France. Usama Abdullah Al Absi shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Italy. Dr. Walid Khalif Al Man'a shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Malaysia. Sheikh Khalifa bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Jordan. Ali Jassim Ahmed Al Aradi shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Algeria. Abdul Aziz Mohammed Al Eid shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Tunisia. Bassam Ahmed Marzouk shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Turkey. Saud Hassan Al Nasuf shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Korea. Khalid Ahmed Al Mansour shall be appointed as Bahrain's Ambassador Plenipotentiary to Iraq. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 6 of 2024, transferring extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassadors to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs based on the recommendations of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1 The following ambassadors shall be transferred to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador Ahmed Yusuf Ahmed Al Rawai, head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Jordan. Ambassador Ibrahim Yusuf Al Abdullah, head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Turkey. Ambassador Fuad Sadiq Al Baharna shall be a Bahrain's uh, diplomatic mission to Algeria. Ambassador Ibrahim Mahmoud Ahmed, head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Tunisia. Ambassador Dr. Nasser Mohammed Yusuf Al Blushi, head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to Italy. A batch of Royal Guard cadet officers graduated during a ceremony which was held under the patronage of National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa in the presence of Royal Guard Special Force Commander Staff Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser unveiled the curtain to mark the opening of the Fallen Servicemen Square, Major Abdullah Rashid Al Naimi, in appreciation of his military contributions inside and outside the country. The ceremony began with the Royal Guard Commander's anthem. Then His Highness Sheikh Nasser inspected the parade queue. After verses from the Holy Quran were recited, a briefing on the session stages and training programs was presented. Then the uh, graduates presented an infantry field military show. His Highness confirmed that uh, thanks to the constant care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the sound directives of BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard always witnesses tangible development. He praised the standard of the scientific and practical course, which can qualify soldiers towards the highest levels of efficiency and competence, commending the graduates' military skills. His Highness thanked the instructors for their efforts to hone the graduates' professional skills, urging the cadet officers to spare no effort to serve the nation and defend the homeland, wishing them success. His Highness then distributed gifts to high achievers. The graduates then took their legal oath. Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard Major General Hamad Khalif and Naimi, a number of officers and members of the Royal Guard and the families of the graduates were present. Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Mr. Al Amn Al Watani, Qaid Al Haras Al Maliki, Bitawzi Al Jawaiz Ala Awail Al Dawra, Al Hasal Ala Al Markaz Al Awail Fi Majmu Al Alamat, Al Jindi Mustajid, Faisal Jamal Al Dosan. الحاصل على المركز الأول في دورة الحرس الملكي رقم 39 الجندي مستجد عبد الله جمال أحمد
الحاصل على المركز الاول في اللياقه البدنيه الجندي مستجد محمد فيصل محمد لا شيء الحاصل على المركز الاول في الرمايه والمركز الاول في الضبط والربط العسكري جندي مستجد بدر محمد جابر الحاصل على المركز الاول في حركات المشاة جندي مستجد يوسف توفيق بجندة والان قسم الخدمه العسكريه يلقي العميد الدكتور محمد علي بجندة أقسم بالله العظيم أقسم بالله العظيم أقسم بالله العظيم باعتباري عسكريا في قوة الدفاع أن أكون وفيا لمملكة البحرين أمينا على حقوقها مخلصا لمليكها القائد الأعلى الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة والله على ما أقول شهيد The Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation and the UAE organized the 12th mass wedding ceremony in Bahrain in cooperation with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation RHF held at the Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Hall at the University of Bahrain in Sakhir under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work in youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa in the presence of Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Secretary General of the RHF, the Director General of the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation for Humanitarian Work in the UAE and Muhammad Al Khouri, ambassadors to Bahrain, invitees, and the grooms. It is considered the largest mass wedding ceremony in Bahrain, celebrating the marriage of 1,600 young men and women. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the UAE, as well as the cooperation in various fields, especially in humanitarian work, under the guidance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the RHF, and the UAE president, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the cooperation between the Foundation and the RHF through implementing many projects. He added that the ceremony comes to support the youth of Bahrain to help them form a family that contributes to the nation's development and prosperity. He congratulated the newlyweds, wishing them a happy married life. The ceremony included a speech by the grooms. His Highness then honored the Foundation for its continued support of the wedding ceremony. The Director General of the Foundation presented a commemorative gift to His Highness. Al Khouri expressed appreciation to the leadership of the two countries for the support of the mass wedding a ceremony in Bahrain, praising the ongoing cooperation between the Foundation and the RHF and what has resulted in the implementation of many humanitarian initiatives. He expressed pride in organizing this most prominent ceremony in the history of mass weddings in the Kingdom, bringing the total number of beneficiaries to 9,726 men and women. 
his part, RHF Secretary General Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa expressed his gratitude to the leadership of the two countries for the continuous support for various humanitarian projects organized under the supervision of the two countries. He extended appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for his annual sponsorship of the mass wedding ceremony. The Representatives Council held its weekly session chaired by its speaker, Ahmed Limsellem. The council approved the referral of a draft law on the general budget to the specialized committees. The council approved a proposal on the Bahrainization of a number of professions in the private sector. A proposal on establishing a ministry for planning in Bahrain was also approved. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the 7th Arab Information and Communication Technology Conference organized by the Bahrain Society of Engineers. In cooperation with the Federation of Arab Engineers Communications and Information Technology Committee under the title Digital Transformation for Sustainable Infrastructure in the presence of ministers and officials. The Deputy Premier affirmed the importance of achieving the sustainability of infrastructure by adopting modern technologies and projects and integrating AI technologies in line with the goals of the comprehensive development process and Bahrain's cultural development under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted that the conference is a platform to exchange knowledge and experiences which contributes to employing digital development and directing it towards providing sustainable infrastructure for the region. He called on the necessity of unifying Arab efforts to create a system capable of employing digital transformation that stimulates innovation. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah thanked the Bahrain Society of Engineers and its partners for organizing the conference, wishing the participants success in reaching results and recommendations that will contribute to achieving its goals. The president of the society, Dr. Raid Al Alawi, commended the support of the deputy premier of the society's initiatives. The secretary general of the Federation of Arab Engineers, Professor Dr. Adil Al Hadithi, affirmed that choosing Bahrain as the headquarters of the Federation's committee is the ideal choice due to the Kingdom's keenness to raise performance levels at all fields. The Deputy Prime Minister then honored the conference's sponsors including government agencies, companies and individuals. The Tunisian President Qais Saeed received Arab Interior Ministers on the occasion of the 41st session of the Arab Interior Ministers Council. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, headed Bahrain's delegation participating in the session, chaired by the Qatari Minister of State for Interior Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Faisal bin Mohammed Al Thani, who took over the presidency of the session from the Palestinian Minister of Interior, Major General Ziyad Habarih. During the session, the Interior Minister delivered Bahrain's address. It is my pleasure to say that I would like to thank the gratitude and the gratitude to the President Qais Saeed, the President of the Tunisian Republic, on his pleasure to the President of the Tunisian Republic, on his pleasure to the President of the Tunisian Republic. كما أتوجه بالشكر إلى معالي الأخ اللواء زياد هب الريح وزير داخلية دولة فلسطين الشقيقة على ما قام به من جهود مشكورة خلال ترأسه للدورة السابقة للمجلس معربا عن شكري لمعالي الأخ الدكتور محمد بن علي كومان الأمين العام للمجلس وكافة العاملين بالأمان العامة على جهودهم الطيبة في الإعداد والتحضير لعقد هذا الاجتماع أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة السادة الحضور إن مجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب يعد اليوم الفرصة السانحة لتقييم الأوضاع وتحديد المخاطر والتحديات الأمنية وإن اجتماعنا هذا 
يأتي في ظل ظروف استثنائية يمر بها عالمنا العربي مما يدفعنا إلى مزيد من التشاور وتبادل الآراء التي تهدف إلى تقوية جبهتنا الأمنية العربية والنأي بها عن أجواء اللا أمن ترسيخا للشعور بالطمأنينة والأمان وهي الغاية التي يتطلع إليها كل مواطن عربي وإني أنتهز هذا اللقاء المبارك لكي أتحدث إليكم أيها الأخوة الأعزاء بمنظور واقعي حول الظروف المحيطة بنا ومنها الخطر الصامت الذي يحاول غزو ومداهمة هويتنا العربية ومقاصدها بمتغيرات فكرية سلبية دخيلة غايتها عزل الأمة عن ثوابتها وقيمها الأصيلة والسعي إلى استبدالها بثقافة مستوردة مثل ثقافة العنف والكراهية وافتعال صراعات داخلية تحت شعارات هدامة مما يجعل المحافظة على هويتنا العربية هي المصد الأولى والطريق السليم لقوتنا وصلابة أمننا واستقرار مجتمعنا فهويتنا العربية أيها الأخوة تجسد الإحساس الكلي القوي من خلال الارتباط بقواسمنا المشتركة المرتكزة على اللغة والدين والتراث والثقافة فالهوية العربية لا تعبر عن نفسها ضمن حدود زمانية ومكانية بل هي إطار جمعي عروبي يقوم على مفهوم الانتماء العربي لأن الانتماء هو التأصيل الحقيقي للهوية وعصب وجودها والتوصيف العام للهوية العربية هي أن تكون طروحتها أمننا الاجتماعي بالتالي لا بد من وضع الآليات المناسبة والسبل الكفيلة للنهوض بالهوية العربية وأن لا تكون رهينة للظروف بل لا بد من فتح المجال للتشجيع على تقديم المبادرات والبرامج التي يمكن أن تتبناها أمانة مجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب من أجل تعزيز الهوية العربية وتقويتها باعتبارها رمز حضارتنا والدالة على قوة ومتانة دولنا واستقرار أمننا المشترك أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة إن قوة التعاون والتنسيق الأمني فيما بيننا لا تترك مجالا لظهور أي جماعات أو كيانات تحاول أن تجد لها مكانا ودورا فوضويا يزعزع الاستقرار وفق أجندات وأيديولوجيات خارجية وهذا ما يدفعنا للتركيز على وقف أي نزيف أمني عربي عربي أولا ومن ثم اتخاذ الإجراءات الفاعلة لمحاربة كافة أشكال الدعم للجماعات الخارجة عن القانون من خلال توحيد وتضافر الجهود لمواجهتها حفاظا على الأمن والاستقرار وفي الختام أتمنى لأعمال هذا المجلس التوفيق والنجاح والخروج بنتائج تساهم في تعزيز الاستقرار وترسيخ القيم ودعم الأمن العربي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Arab Ministers of Interior discussed a number of topics on the agenda as well as relevant draft laws including a draft law on the 11th Arab Security Plan, Arab Media Plan for Security Awareness in Crime Prevention and the 8th Interim Plan for the Arab Strategy for Traffic Safety.
The Interior Minister held meetings with his Arab counterparts where he met the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan. They highlighted the historical fraternal relations between the two countries and the common interest to bolster security cooperation in various fields. The minister expressed appreciation for the UAE's honorable stances towards Bahrain. The meeting discussed prospects for security cooperation and coordination in light of the results of the meeting of the Joint Security Committee between the ministries of interior in the two countries. The Interior Minister also met with his Egyptian Minister of Interior Major General Mahmoud Tawfiq, praising the depth of the established relations between the two countries. The Minister expressed the importance to enhance security cooperation in various fields to protect common interests and maintain security and stability. The meeting reviewed security cooperation and coordination and the results reached by the meetings of the Joint Security Committee. The Minister of Interior also met the Jordanian Minister of Interior, Mazen Al Faraya, praising the historical and close relations between the two kingdoms. The meeting discussed enhancing coordination and building on what has been achieved in security cooperation based on the keenness of both sides to enhance joint work through the Joint Security Committee to improve performance to confront security challenges and rapid changes on the regional and international levels. The Interior Minister also met with the Lebanese Minister of Interior and Municipalities, Judge Bassam Mawali. The two sides reviewed developments in the security field within the framework of security cooperation and coordination, in addition to topics on ways to support bilateral relations. During his visit to Tunisia, the minister was accompanied by a delegation that included Bahrain's ambassador to Tunisia and a number of officials from the ministry. A high-level meeting organized by Palestine in cooperation with the Arab Islamic Ministerial Committee in Geneva was held, headed by Palestinian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates Dr. Riyad al-Maliki, and on the presence of a number of foreign ministers in Arab and Islamic countries and representatives of countries participating in the 55th session of the Human Rights Council. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, affirmed that the two state solution is the right solution to the Palestinian Israeli conflict and the achievements of a just and comprehensive peace for all countries and peoples of the region. As Zayani said that Bahrain believes that the establishment of the State of Palestine means a transformative victory for all peoples of the region and a path to lasting peace and security, calling for a unified effort to achieve a two state solution. The minister expressed Bahrain's concern about the tragic situation and unbearable conditions in Gaza, which has created a humanitarian crisis represented by the loss of life, injuries and ongoing forced displacement as basic necessities have become out of reach for hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. He said that the deprivation of basic rights on such a large scale requires a firm and immediate response from the international community, noting that it's necessary for Israel to take quick and decisive measures to stop violence and escalation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Jordan, Dr. Ayman Safadi, on the sidelines of the 55th session of the Human Rights Council. The two sides affirmed the importance of historical bilateral relations between the two countries and discussed ways to further enhance cooperation. They also stressed the importance of continuing joint coordination at the political and diplomatic levels regarding issues and challenges facing the Arab world. They also discussed uh, the humanitarian condition of the civilians in Gaza and the international efforts aimed at stopping the war, providing protection for civilians and delivering humanitarian aid. Both sides underscored their support for the efforts aimed at achieving a just, a lasting and comprehensive peace that consolidates regional security and stability.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Boreta. The meeting discussed historical relations between the two kingdoms and ways to develop cooperation in all fields. The two sides reviewed regional developments and areas of strengthening a joint Arab action to confront all regional challenges, including the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip and the regional and international efforts being made to achieve a ceasefire, protect civilians, provide humanitarian aid to the civilian population in Gaza, and open horizons for political settlement and achieving peace in the Middle East. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk. During the meeting, aspects of joint cooperation between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the High Commission for Human Rights in areas related to the promotion and protection of human rights were discussed. They reviewed Bahrain's pioneering achievements in many areas and a number of regional and international issues of common interest, including the protection of the rights of the Palestinian people in light of the tragic conditions in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and supporting efforts to stop the war in the Gaza Strip, protect civilians and deliver humanitarian aid to alleviate their suffering. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Mauritanian a Commissioner for Human Rights, a humanitarian action and relations with civil society as Sheikh Ahmed Sidi. During the meeting, the two sides discussed the bilateral fraternal relations and the means of bolstering cooperation and exchanging successful uh, experiences in the field of protecting and enhancing human rights and freedoms at the bilateral level and an international level and events to achieve common interests. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Finland, Elina Folentinen, on the sidelines of the 55th session of the Human Rights Council. They discussed joint cooperation between the two countries in various fields and ways to enhance and develop it to serve the two friendly countries in addition to discussing issues of common interest. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, participated in the coordination meeting of the Arab bloc, participating in the 13th Ministerial Conference of the World Trade Organization, held in the UAE. The minister commended the UAE's efforts for hosting the conference, Saudi Arabia's role as the coordinator of the Arab group for the WTO, the permanent delegation of the League of Arab States to the UN office, and other international organizations for their support to economic issues. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness on enhancing food security by securing supply chains to ensure that basic food needs reach fully and seamlessly to all segments of society. Fakhro highlighted the kingdom's efforts to advance e-commerce within the framework of supporting international efforts to achieve a more efficient, sustainable and comprehensive trade system. The minister underscored the role of SMEs in developing the economy. He said he looked forward to the positive outcomes of the conference. Based on the significant progress achieved by Bahrain in direct investment, which exceeded 2.8 billion US dollars, the kingdom is preparing to make further achievements in diversified investment, strengthening the kingdom's status as a global destination for investment in a process that requires further efforts by attracting investments in priority sectors and implementation of economic diversification initiatives, which was embodied in many developmental achievements as part of the comprehensive development passes in Bahrain with the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf emphasized the importance of the role of the child's social report in achieving restorative justice for children and promoting the best interests of the children in all rulings, decisions and procedures related to them. More in this report. The Child Social Report comes within a series of legislation, laws and initiatives developed by Bahrain to protect the rights of children and ensure their proper upbringing in various circumstances. During 2023, the Justice Ministry prepared 418 reports and carried out 82 visits to rehabilitation centers, social care centers and others. The International Convention on the Rights of the Child is considered one of the most prominent agreements ratified by Bahrain 
followed by the establishment of the Child Protection Center, the adoption of the Child Help and Support Hotline, the establishment of Matilco Child Welfare Home, in addition to the formation of the Juvenile Court, in which the privacy of the child was taken into account, and the opening of many children and youth centers and family guidance offices in all social centers across the kingdom. Bahrain has worked to form the National Committee for Childhood, as it works to implement the National Strategic Action Plan for Childhood, which focuses on four main axes, focusing on health protection, education, right to protection, and right to participation and non-discrimination. On Thursday, the first rounds will begin with two Formula One practice sessions, which will be followed by a third free practice session and the Formula One qualifying session on Friday, with the Grand Prix race beginning on Saturday. More in this report. Year after year, Bahrain International Circuit hosts the Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix, which has become known as one of the most exciting races of the Formula One season. 20 years of making history is the name given to this year's race as Bahrain International Circuit celebrates the 20th anniversary of hosting Formula One races in Bahrain. This year's race also kicks off as the opening round in the new Formula One 2024 season calendar, consisting of 24 races on the International Automobile Federation's calendar. One of the uh, here today, one of as a new member of the Formula One club, it is a club. Uh, that spans the globe, thanks to the very diligent efforts of Mr. Ecclestone here next to me. It represents excellence, it represents competitiveness, and it represents quality. And above all else, uh, those are the elements that we would like to see fostered inside Bahrain. So, we've just given you a very small taste here tonight of what you can expect when you come out there. But I can guarantee that you will have uh, a young country, an eager country, and a country that will welcome you with open arms. The home of motorsports in the Middle East, this phrase confirms Bahrain history since 2004, after opening the circuit and hosting the first race in the region, which entered a new era in hosting major international sporting events. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa had a prominent role in adopting this project, which strengthened Bahrain's position in international sports circles to fulfill the vision of His Majesty the King. <laughs> 